Alrighty, well, I just got the live up right this moment, so that is a good time as any to start. Let me get the Zencaster started. Got a countdown of the dos uno. Sweet. All right, so that's all working. That's all working. We got our fun ready to go. Okay, hi. This is the Pub Crawlers. I'm Bash. We are hosting the fourth section of the IRS Charity Workshop today, covering required disclosures. And joining me is Kevy Mac. Hello, Kevy. Hello, I'm from Pub Crawlers too. I Yay. like to crawl Yay. in the pub. All right, we're uh, <laughs> going through nine pages. It looks like 30 different uh, slides. We're going to go through this one a little quick today. So, getting started. Start. Welcome to the required <laughs> disclosures course. <laughs> Hi, I'm Legal, the Stay Exempt Eagle, and I'll guide you through the courses here at Stay Exempt. Before you start, there are a few things you should know. First, if you like to take written notes, you might want to print this course. The printout may make it easier to follow along, especially if you haven't taken many online courses. Also, this course includes questions and activities to test your knowledge. You'll need to click on the screen to answer the questions and participate in the activities. When you're ready to learn about required disclosures, select the Objectives button. Where's the Objectives button? Oh, it, it just popped up. Oh, okay, okay. I was about to write that on my notes of things they already fucked up. In this course, you'll learn to identify which records are open to public inspection. I'll show you how to determine the fair market value of goods or services given in exchange for contributions and will ensure you understand that donors should receive accurate written acknowledgments of their contributions so they'll donate again. First, let's cover the basic public inspection rules. Hi, I'm Clarence. I'm the president of the local big band jazz society. A complete stranger asked me for a copy of my organization's annual return. She said if I didn't give her a copy right away, she'd complain to the IRS and I'd get fined. Is she right? What do I do? Hi, Clarence. Hell it's no. It's okay. As Actually, I think so. As the proprietor of a section really? 501c3 organization, you do have a yep. responsibility yep. to keep certain Damn. documents on hand Always. and available for public yep. viewing. So you can just have the it on a website. The Revenue Code has rules about this, which we refer to as required disclosures. Yep. Let's take a look at which documents should be kept on hand and the rules for disclosing them. Select the Public Inspections button to learn more. Yeah, so when we first talked about all of these things, this was one of the big things that we talked about because we were like, wait, what? what? What's required? And... Yeah, mm -hmm. they were pretty simple. So what documents? It's do like I the stuff that we file. Um, In return for being tax exempt and receiving tax deductible contributions, Congress requires Section 501c3 organizations to disclose information about their organizations to the public. You're required to share the following documents with the public when requested. Annual returns for three years after the due date. This includes returns like your Form 990, 990EZ, 990PF and 990T, all Form 990 schedules except portions of Schedule B, its attachments and supporting documents, your application for exemption and all supporting documents like Form 1023 or Form 1023-EZ if you filed on or after July 15, 1987, and the determination letter from the IRS that shows your organization has tax-exempt status. Certain documents must be made available immediately, while others can take you some time to gather and reproduce. Select the Timeline button to learn more. All right. We got that? One second. You're good. Yeah, these, this is just a repeat from that very first one that we did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, the 1023. Yeah, I remember that one. Oh, and the 99. Yeah, yeah. So tax. Some... Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they really stress about certain documents you always need to have. And mm -hmm. 
And again, we can just yeah, have yeah. it on like a repository and a, available online for anyone to see. So like you could put it on a website, you could put oh, okay. it on a fucking GitHub, you could have a an image on Imgur that you link to. I mean, like, I mean, come on, how? So how quick we could do, do it I free, or we could have it on our website where it's paid under Normally, our name and it says like pub crawler or something or other. You know, that that's the way to do it. Because I don't have a permanent office. I run my organization out of my home. No problem, Clarence. If your organization has no office see, or this has is, limited this, hours during this is certain times very of the year, the requested information should be made available within two weeks. Some people might want copies to take with them. Click the Making Copies button to continue. How quickly do you have to have the documents available? So if we have a permanent location, it has to be requested, or has to be the day they are requested. And if it's a limited office of some kind, two weeks. Ah. Okay, I'm good. Awesome. I'm just typing this up real fast. Up to two weeks. If someone asks for copies to keep, do I have to provide them? Yes, you do, whether the request is made in person or in writing. But I don't have a copy machine. Do I have to pay for the copies myself? Actually, you can charge a reasonable fee to cover the cost of the copies. But there's a simple solution. Just use the internet. <laughs> you your information online, oh my you God. It's exactly what I said! <laughs> consider the job done. There are, however, several documents that you don't have to provide. Select the Continue button to learn more. <laughs> Use internet to solve all this. What's my last note? The rules seem rather broad. <laughs> so are yeah. we really required to provide all documents? No, you're not required to share all business documents. For instance, you don't have to disclose some information found on Schedule B of Form 990 or Form 990-EZ, documentation for unfavorable rulings, or certain types of information that the IRS approved. Click on the text for specifics. Remember that there are consequences to not complying with these rules. Select the Penalties button to find out more. You are not required to disclose... IRS approved withholding unfavorable rulings. That's kind of interesting. Trade secrets, patents, processes. I'm actually interested in the unfavorable yeah, I'll, I'll, rulings one. I'll click on all of these. You do not have to identify the contributors by name. Do not have to identify Identify contributors by name. That's what, um, that's what Candy, oh, hi, I'm Candy. That's what that's for. You could be like, uh, be like an OnlyFans or something. Oh, I got you. You, you, you can use like your OnlyFans name. Yeah. Don't even have to. Don't even have to. So it's like if someone is like, "Hey, who, who's giving you money?" You can be like, "It's this, these individuals: individual A, individual B, individual C, individual D, yeah, and yeah. it's these amounts on these dates." But then, yeah, trade secrets, patents, processes. Ooh, that's national big. defense material. Styles of okay. work, national defense. Material. Okay, cool. So we'll just make a church that is uh, for the Department of Defense. And, yep, that's what we'll do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, for real. Unfavorable rulings. An earlier denial of tax-exempt status is an example.
An earlier denial of tax exempt status is an example of an unfavorable ruling. Mm -hmm. I'm. You mentioned okay. penalty. Wait, are you confused? I'm. I'm I, I don't. I don't get the wording of that. So basically, they're saying like, let's say you formed a 501c3 and you applied and you got denied, and then you made your adjustments and then you applied again and that one got approved. You don't have to prove or show people your previous uh, denial. Denial. Oh, like I. I guess I'm getting confused uh, by denial. Once again, so um, let's say you apply to BO Charity and the IRS denies you. They send you a letter that says no, that's the denial, right? But then yeah. after that, you go and apply for an, another 501c3 charity application with different information in there, like whatever they mm -hmm. needed different, and you get accepted and approved. Oh, I see. Okay. Then okay. you don't have to hold on to that denial and show it to people. Oh, I see. That okay. You just have to hold on to the current one, which is the approval. I think of it as like getting your driver's license. You know, you go there, you fail the test, you fail the test, you fail the test. But if but then you pass. But then you eventually then you passed. Your, you don't yeah. have to then like if a cop pulls you over, you don't have to show them all your denial or all your fails, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or if just anyone pulls you over, technically, from the way that this works. These penalties are they you or employees of your organization can be fined twenty dollars for each day of non compliance up to a maximum of ten thousand dollars. If the failure to comply was deemed willful, the employee could face a penalty of five thousand dollars per return or application. So let's review what you've learned so far. Man, all you have to do is literally just have a website repository of some kind. Mm-hmm. And just update the information. You've learned that there are certain documents you must disclose to the public upon request. Okay. They... Hold on. Excuse you? Get over here. Come here. Come here. She giving you big screams. Yeah, you hold on real fast. Is that what that like round sound was? I caught her. I caught her. <laughs> Alrighty. I I do remember this. The the documents required for disclosure. You got to have the last three years of your form nine ninety. I do recall that in the first one, in the first workshop. Yep. Yep, yep. Oh, hold on. Oh, no. Ah, uh, man. Sorry for the delay there. She was, Yeah, she was straight up yelling at me. You're fine, you're fine. Sitting in my closet yelling about stuff. <laughs> All right, come on. Please turn on. Sweet, it did. Very nice. All right. Mind if I continue? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Include your annual returns, like the Form 990, Form 990-EZ, or Form 990-PF, any Form 990-Ts, all Form 990 schedules, attachments, and supporting documents, Form 1023, or Form 1023-EZ, and your determination letter. Remember that you're not required Yay. to disclose the donors listed in Schedule B of Form 990 or 990-EZ, any unfavorable rulings or anything the IRS said you could withhold. And don't Which forget is very to provide specific. the information in a timely manner and provide copies upon request. Finally, penalties for noncompliance can be severe. So let's try an exercise. It's like super easy to, to comply. So like I don't understand why someone would have noncompliance. But I do understand why their penalties are so severe. Because like, you know, imagine someone's just like pretending. Right? To be like a charity and like getting people to like give them money and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, you take the money and run. Well, then the people would be like, they wouldn't like imagine you go, uh, what is it? Like, you say, oh, yeah, I, I donated to this charity and you put it on your taxes and you put their 501c3 number on there and shit. And then they're like, no, you owe us that money. Like, that's mm. not tax deductible. Yeah. Oof. Dang, I can't get this 
Does it need to be even smaller? There we go. Damn. Trying to just keep it on the same page there. Take too much time. That's like what Trump did with his university. That's exactly what he did. That is exactly what he did. He fucking took that money from all those people donating and applying for that fucking school. And Bro, then close the school. His sons can't and even. Fuck his, all those his sons are not legal, legally allowed to be involved in a charity again. Because of how much they Jesus. fucked around with that shit. Like it wasn't even like we're just gonna uh, fine you. It was you're so fucked. You are not allowed to have a New York Let's charity ever again. You are banned. Yeah. The woman requested. Yeah, dude. It was a big deal. List of contributors. Should you do it? I know. Select the best answer. I feel like it's just forgotten though. Button, right. Check it, it. it in the wind. Yeah, so much in the last few years. Okay, select yes or no, then select submit. A woman just asked you to email her a list of contributors. Should you do it? Nope. Well, you can, but you don't have to, to say their names. You could say... So, specifically, um, the, wor the, the word contributors is the same word that they said earlier when they said you don't have to uh, um, identify contributors by name, only mm -hmm. dollar amount. And so this is, I think this is a no, but it, I mean, technically it, it's a yes. You can, but that's at, at your own. Well, it's not, it's, it's not specifying whether or not if that list is just all your contributors or your, or if it has a name. So do we say yes then? Wait, hold on, hold on. Select yes or no. Let me just read this out. Yep. It's like yes or no. Then select the submit button to check your answers. Okay. A woman just asked you to email her a list of contributors. Should you do it? No, because you don't have to disclose your contributors. You do have to disclose your contributors, uh, like amounts. Amounts. So, yes. So, like, like well, it, like but we, it's not. It's not. It's not specifying contributor amounts. Welcome to contributors. So, to me, that's like a hard draw line. That's what I thought at first, but the way that they've kind we, of we we will go with yes though. I will. All right. Well, let's, Real let's, fast. Let's, Welcome, Kiss and Pie. Thank you for joining you us. Uh, join in on that Zencaster link, too. Yeah, hello, hello Kiss. Hope How you're having you a good, uh, good afternoon. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I guess it was good. I, I, I slept the whole time. Fuck yeah. So did I. <laughs> I woke up at 438 today. <laughs> Love and then was like, oh, shit, I got to get on for the workshop. <laughs> oh, nice. This I did the same fun. thing, except at 530. This one's uh, pretty <laughs> easy today. We're doing uh, required disclosures. And we're already almost halfway through it. Oh, nice. Yeah. I am I am taking notes on the Computron. Nice. Because I'm tired of Bash telling me to do it. <laughs> 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 you've you you brought yourself into the new age, brother. <laughs> I just like writing stuff, but you can't do it with this stuff. You gotta you gotta type it. Welcome to the twenty first century. If you century. wanted to move. <laughs> I like to, you know. <laughs> nah, never mind. Fuck it. I like to. I like to be the Flintstones. You know. Well, I'm actually. Around. I'm curious, real fast. Uh, Kiss. What do you think the answer to the question is? Right here. We're on a knowledge check that you don't know what the knowledge is, but it's fine. All right. All right. Let me check it out real quick. Give us your a woman celebrity just asked choice. you to email her a list of contributors. Should you do it? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, so when we were taking the notes earlier, it said Form 990 Schedule B, which is the list of the names of our contributors. We do not have to provide that, but we do have to provide individual contributors' amounts. That they've donated, right? Yes. So, like, we could say, so like... like just, just a hard cash number. That's yeah, like, it. a date and an amount, I believe, are the two things that we have to have, but we don't have to put a name to it. To the IRS, we do. But to if if like someone just like uh, emails us one day and is like, "Hey, who are your contributors?" We do have to provide the contributor contributors list of amounts, not names. And so the argument here is, by saying list of contributors, are they asking for names, or are they just asking for numbers? Because if it's numbers, it's yes. If it's, I feel like that needs to be clarified. And because it's not, that's why I feel like it would be a a yes. Because I think they're trying I to will, trick us. Oh, I see. I see. I think they're you trying to trick us. I still think no, but I will. Same. I, I want to see what it says with yes. Same. I think yeah. I think it is no, 
but because it didn't say anything about names. Yeah, that it, it, it's like it's like going up to a stop sign, mm-hmm. L- like in the state of Maryland. <laughs> if 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 there is no sign that says you cannot, you can assume to right turn on red. Oh yeah. Oh okay. So yeah. I think of it that way. Yeah. So it might be yes. Yeah. All because right. it doesn't say you can't, or it doesn't say. Ah! Oh. <laughs> So, yeah, you don't have to disclose the names of your contributors, only the amounts and natures of the contributions. See, this is really funny, though. It never said anything about names here. It just said list of (laughs) contributors, which technically would be the amounts, right? Or Yeah, but don't we have to keep records of all of We have to. Yeah, we have to send that to the IRS. This is all about – Yeah, exactly. This is public disclosure. So, like, this is if, like, someone – about dealing with the public. Like – there's there's we're in this like age where paper shit still exists and most of our li- laws are all regarded to paper shit but then now there's the <laughs> internet so a lot of this stuff is like you have to be able to provide uh all these documents to people when requested but all we have to do is just have a website or somewhere that we can point them to and be like look that's what it is you know go to this link view our terms Let's of look service at another scenario yep all right, so here's another knowledge Suppose check. your organization has a parent organization and a man asks you to mail him copies of your parent organization's annual returns for the past three years. He says he'll pay for the copies. Should you do it? Select the best answer, then select the submit button to check it. What do you guys think? I don't like to pay for the copies part. That feels like a detail they threw in to trip us up. The reason he, he said that is because a uh, copy request must be fulfilled by the 501c3 However, the cost of copies may be charged to the requesting party. But if you just put it online, no one has to deal with copies. My question is this. Is the parent organization (laughs) in the same state as you? There's such a disconnect there that I feel like it's an outright no. Yeah, yeah. But maybe there's something that they haven't covered that we'll learn here. What do you think, Kiss? I'm going to say yes. Oh, sorry. Mm, Yeah, after you said said uh, that about copies, well, that we do have to keep annual um, returns for the past three years at least for ours, end. for ours. Yes, for all on our end. Right. So if you're dealing with just the money, <clears throat> you know, you're looking at just annual returns of contributors, because that's who's giving you the money for the annual returns is your contributors. The parent organization might not be a charity. That yeah, that's kind of yeah, a, that's a, a very thing. gray area when it says parent organization. Yeah, it might not be a charity at all. Yeah, you know? so I'm thinking that that's that, what I'm thinking. It like, yeah, it's it's wide just, open. There. I almost feel like they're using charity laws to try and pull information from something. But again, I might be wrong here. I think it's a no. Mm. Kevy says it's a yes. Kiss, what I'm do you say? say? It's a yes. Uh, Tiebreaker. Just because uh, I said it, she said no. Yeah. I'm gonna say <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we thought say, that last one was no, but then we overthought it. I'm gonna, I thought it was I'm no. Say that we I said no. That our parent organization is uh, a nonprofit, and I'm going to say yes. Okay. I'm going to go with yes. Should you do it? So I have two yeses. I'm the only no. You guys might be the winners here. Ah. All right. You are required to, if the returns are available on a website. By the way. Mm-hmm. So I guess what this is technically saying is not the copies of the other organization's return. Because this answer right here, you are required to disclose three years of annual returns. That's Mm -hmm. your returns. Yes, but that that has to be available for people. But they were asking about the that That's part of the public documents that you have to have on hand. Yeah. um, That if someone requests it of you, says, hey, I want to see this, you 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 have it. You could direct them yeah, to the it website says, or whatever. Yeah, it says it right here. If the returns are available mm-hmm. on a website, direct the person to that site. Otherwise, send the return within two weeks. And the parent organization was a nonprofit. They'd be keeping their own returns. That, that was, I think, just to confuse Great you. Great job. You've... Let's yeah. look at another scenario. Suppose yeah, your copies of your parent, a parent organization and a man asks you to mail him copies of your parent organization's annual returns for the past three years. He no, you don't know what that parent copies. organization is. Did you do it? 
So yeah, I think I think so there's a lot the of assumptions yeah. going on in these knowledge checks that aren't. Yes. Yes. Um, they don't make the Great question job. worthwhile you almost. To identify which records are open to public inspection. <laughs> oh, you, Next, you didn't want to try to answer it? We just did. That was the same one. I just went on back and over it again. Services they oh, oh, fuck. For their donations. Yeah, yeah. That was, you guys got it right. Aside from documents, what other kind quid of disclosures pro quo? are there? <laughs> well, there are also quid pro quo <laughs> I've heard that name enough. That, the, those quid three words. Oh, who's that character? Something Next for something for something. As in, you give something to get something. When a donor makes a contribution a to an organization and they receive a good or service in Imagine return that. for their donation, they've made a quid pro quo contribution. If that donation is greater than $75 and you give the donor something in return, you must disclose the value of that item or service to the donor. So why do quid pro quo donations matter? Well, donors can only claim a deduction for the amount they contributed above the amount of the goods or services they received. For example, a donor oh. gives $100, then he receives a $40 concert ticket. The donor can claim $60. I love how they use a concert, concert ticket. Jesus Christ, Bash. Any receipts Fuck or them. written statements must be You just got you just you just got you just so should kidding. never Fuck use him. fine print for this. Next, oh let's talk God. more about the receipts. Select the That's map really matters funny. button to move forward. <laughs> it's right. like the world's trying to tell you something. Right. <laughs> real fast. I just wanted to make sure that last part was real clear is if the reward received is over seventy five dollars, it must be disclosed. No fine friend. Donors can only claim a deduction for the amount they contributed above the amount of goods or services they received. Mm -hmm. Wow, my typing is slower. My typing's fine, it's just my laptop doesn't like it. I smack the keys too hard sometimes. <laughs> I'm a little too Smash, rough on it. Smashing those smashing those keys. I I honestly hate my keyboard. It's really shitty. It was really cheap, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Gotta upgrade mechanical. You wanna hear those clicks and the clacks on the stream. <laughs> no, my mic's too too tuned for that. You wanna hear shit. <laughs> That's why I have on push to talk. So you don't have to hear all my bullshit that I say off of mic. It's funny because <laughs> it does come up on Zencaster. I know. I have to be careful with what I say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, you're not. And I'm just lining these up for my own shit real fast. All right, are we ready for Math Matters? Yeah. yeah. What can I do to prevent any problems with quid pro quo? You need to don't tell give anything for a donation? <laughs> Just don't give anything for a donation. Right, boom, right there. The goods or services <laughs> provided. Here's a sample of what you can use. If you or your contributors would like more information on what individuals can deduct for contributions, you should take the can I deduct my charitable contribution? Ah, this is interesting though. So, like, for instance, what if we had like next? Let's talk about the other a pub crawler's beach might have to kit to your with like a towel so and some other things that you give us five hundred dollars and we give you that and like it's worth a hundred dollars. They could only write off four hundred dollars. That makes total sense. Yeah. Hold on, I I didn't catch that. So You're like, saying... imagine you you know how like sometimes like you can just donate to things, right? But sometimes there'll be like charity drives or something, and like you get something for donating money, right? Oh, like like oh, if you give like ten dollars, you get these candy bars. Right, right, right. So okay. you would only get the difference between the ten dollars minus the candy bar value written off your taxes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. You can't go, oh, hey, here's 20 bucks. Give me a car. You know? <laughs> like, we'll just write it off. Just write. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right. Cool to move on? Yep. Yep. Non quid pro quo. What if I don't give the donors anything for their donation? Technically, if you don't give a donor something in return for his or her contribution, you don't have a disclosure requirement. However, donors can't claim a tax deduction for any contribution unless they maintain a record of the contribution in the form of either a bank record, such as a canceled check, or a written communication from the charity showing the name of the charity, the date of the contribution, and the amount of the contribution. That's what I want us to have. It's, it's basically like on a website that say they like click the donate button or something, they get an email with that information right back. Because like that is, in my opinion, the most important thing for the donator. Like if I'm going to donate to someone, I need that information to write that off on my taxes. Otherwise, that money's just gone. Yeah. Well, it it's it doesn't get reimbursed to the donor. Yes. So I mean it it's it's really for the donor's benefit exactly. for us to make sure every person that donates they get that written off. Cuz again, the point is you want them to donate again. Not necessarily that they will, but you want them to. That's the idea. I believe I might have paused this too early because I think you also need the the IRS number. I believe the IRS number? like um the the charities um fucking EIN or whatever. Like whatever their whatever the IRS uses for um I swear maybe I'm thinking about this the wrong way. I might I'm 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 just going to shut up real quick and you see what it says. In addition, without a written acknowledgement from you Donors can't claim a tax deduction for any single contribution of $250 or more. So if they give over if they give 250 or more, you have to like it is it's required of you to give them. Is that what that's saying? Yes, yes, okay. Without without a written acknowledgement from you. Okay. So it's basically saying like what we were just oh, talking okay. about. The the minimum for that is two fifty. So they donate three hundred and we have to send them a little note. See, I th like in my memory, I might be wrong on this, but I thought when I did my taxes and I put on that line for the 1040 of how much I contributed, I thought there was a, a number for the associated with the charity. I thought there was. I might be wrong. Maybe I just put the name of it in. Trying like I'm trying to remember here and I feel like an asshole for confusing you guys. Um but I, I swear Although there was like a, a number. Hold on, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just, just don't, just don't go past the slide. Yes, I was just. So gonna, you could play it. Go ahead, yeah. yeah, I was just gonna finish it off. Your organization can assist the donor by providing a timely written statement. Next, let's review. Cool to move on? Yep. Yep. Through the details you need to include in a written acknowledgement, select the details button to continue. All right. Details. Is there anything else I need to include in the written acknowledgements? Here's a detailed list. The name of the organization and date of the contribution, the cash contribution amount, the description but not value of any non-cash contribution.
<clears throat> it's just like when you go to like Goodwill or something. That's exactly what you I was thinking about on my shit. shit. They, yeah, they give you a little fucking paper that yeah. says, Here, yeah, yeah. this is what you've done." Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. A statement mm -hmm. that no goods or services were provided by the organization. I did that a lot when I was in uh, Florida. I do that a lot, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Julia's amazing. grandmother had so many, so much old stuff. Nice. That she was getting rid of. If that was the case, or a description and good faith estimate of the value of goods or services. Can you do them both the same way? Like, like it, even if they just donated, can you give them a cash contribution uh, format? What do, you, what do you mean? Instead of like, okay, if the person comes in and just gives you 50 bucks and says, here's my donation, here's 50 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have to give them a cash contribution uh, written statement? Or can you do the donation so, format? So for instance... Um... Or can you do one for both of them? You can do one for both of them. So, like, the no goods okay, or services. Like that makes it less complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, all they're doing and separating here is if you donate an item that's not cash, you have to specify what it is. Oh, I see. But if you donate something yeah. that is cash, you have to specify how much it is. And if you okay. got anything in return for it, you have to specify what it is and how much it's, the value was if any that an organization provided in return for the contribution and a statement that goods or services if any that an organization provided in return for the contribution consisted entirely of intangible religious benefits if that was the case any questions on this once I'm just typing mm -hmm. yeah in my opinion that makes a lot of sense it's very very clear cut and dry got to say what it is where it came from and what you did in return it's just like a receipt of a goods of exchange if you were like a business selling something yeah exactly eep, eep. okay good to go so when do i have to send the acknowledgement to the donor generally organizations send acknowledgements to All donors no weeks. later than january 31 of the year following the donation that's because donors must receive the acknowledgement by the earlier of the date on which the donor files his or her individual federal tax returns for the year of the contribution or the due date of the return, including extensions. Can I send the donor an email acknowledgement? Yes. An organization can either provide a paper yeah. copy of the acknowledgement or it can provide the acknowledgement electronically, such as an email addressed to the donor. Okay. Real fast. I can tell you, though, some older people do not like emails. Yeah. They prefer hard copy and or some sort of letter. They can print it out. If they do have a printer and they know how it works, which in my experience is they do, you do get those genes that don't, though. And screw them. <laughs> and that's when I'm like, Jane, I don't want to renovate your pool anymore. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, so Spider real fast. Out. Um, I hate to be this nitpicky, but I'm putting this down as a error for when I write them. Donors must receive the acknowledgement by the early of. Or, I'm sorry, it's even worse. By the earlier of. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read that. <laughs> That's so Jesus. So basically, before January 31st of each year, you have to have all your... Any... Donations of two hundred fifty dollars were more. Two hundred fifty bucks or more is like the minimum. Like you have to have that stuff written off. But ideally, you want to give a written statement to anyone. Yeah. So if if, if people are just giving us like 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 buying us a coffee or stuff like that. Yeah. No, um, you don't have to. Write we don't that. have to respond to that. But if people are giving us a have significant, to, but you can. And I, I mean, like, I think as much as we can just have automated would be awesome. So it's like they go, oh, boop, yeah. they click a button on a website and that website, boop, pops out all that information right to the inf <sighs> the email that they just put in. My only, my only issue is, man, 
um, coming from, uh, you know, I, uh, anyways, coming just from speak, my business. Just speak, you're good. C coming from my business, a lot of people do not like to provide emails until they talk to someone. They don't like to just throw their email out there all, so, all the time. So, a, a better uh, comparison. Just, I'm just going from experiences. Have you ever donated to a political party? Possibly, but not very much. Have you ever donated to a charity, even like the uh, 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 Goodwill, like you just said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I donate 20 bucks a month to my public radio. So the thing is, the people that are doing the act in, active thing of donating, they usually do that because they want to be able to write that off. So they're mm -hmm. going to put more effort into something. It's not like we're going out and soliciting people for their emails so that we can sell to them. It's more of like, hey, if you're giving us money, you're going to want to be able to record it. So you should send us your email so we can connect you with the receipt. You know what I mean? Like if they just send us money and they don't give us an email, how are we going to reply that donation to them for them to record on their taxes? A letter. We we you could write a letter. You could write a fucking hand handwritten one. No, no. But what I'm saying though is, if they don't provide us, if they donate to us and they don't provide us with any information, how are we uh, going to get that to them? Yeah, that's true. No, that's true. So like that. When look, we, I'm just saying on the other end. Right, right. No, and I hear you. I do. I'm like, just I'm just trying to say that the this setup is a little different because it's not a it's not a a, a, a business solicitation. It's a mm -hmm. donation uh, recipient, like. They're okay. oh. they're coming to us to give money instead of us. I see what you're saying. Uh, charging them money. Yeah. We okay. My business. We don't actually solicit. They call us. Right. 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 And and so they can put the information out there. They can put you know their address, home phone number, cell phone, email, state, city, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Like there are so many people who will call in to us and just give a, like their first name and a phone number right so the way I, I would see that. us working though is we're not going to have a phone number for them to call we're going to have a website yeah. and an email okay you know like why would we yeah, yeah. why would we have a phone number someone would have to staff it it's true it's true i i, I definitely yeah. understand your point i'm just saying from the other end that and I hear you. I do. Like, in, in most of the time, this is from older people. And I do. I, I, I do hear you. I'm not like trying to alienate, like, an older generation or anything like that. It's just, like, I mean, we're either, a gamer group. So, like, our oldest members in his 60s. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't, I like, some people, yeah, won't connect with us. But I don't think that it's age-related at all. The people that want to connect with us know how to and would know <laughs> yeah, what yeah. to do. So, I'm no, not, I definitely not, agree with you. I agree with you 100%. That's my point. It's, like, but getting people that aren't us to donate to us, yeah. Like, how would we go yeah. about doing that? Like, I, I see you on that, but. I just want it to be available for anyone. And I do, I do. If you I, never I, take I, that, but, if you but, never shoot that free throw. But why would we incur all that extra bullshit on ourselves and cost on ourselves that we don't need to? If we could just put it all on a website and make this all available on the internet, that's more than enough. That's totally covers everything. That is, for, that is a great starting point. Yeah. For like, and the, it would be so much easier to deal with. Yeah, because yeah, like yeah. as soon as we start doing, hey, we need to have someone answer a phone. Whoa, that's that's expensive, honestly, because we're gonna outsource it to someone, right? Because no one's gonna actually sit there with a fucking phone ringing to answer a But maybe we will. I sit there with my phone ringing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't be a phone call. It's not going to help you today. No, I How do I phone. get my email to send to you? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, have, have you heard of our handmade soaps? Bro, at that point, that's when you <laughs> that's when you end up becoming tech support. We don't we don't want to provide tech support. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, cool to move on. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm ready to move on. Donors what care about the math. The exactly. The I provide isn't correct. Well, oh, if you give a donor dumbass. inaccurate documentation, they'll likely deduct the wrong amount on their tax returns. Oh, if a donor claims the wrong amount one. as a charitable deduction and gets audited, you can probably assume he or she won't make more donations to your organization. <laughs> Select a letter graphic to see an That's example funny. of a letter you don't yeah. want to receive. That's funny. When you're done. Let's talk about the consequences of not providing donation information. 
Select the penalties button. Let's, I'm going to read this because this is funny. Dear <laughs> Emma, you should have given me a written statement disclosing the value of my concert ticket you gave me recently as a quote-unquote thank you for my contribution during your last fundraiser. Because I didn't know the value of the ticket, I deducted too much from my charitable contributions on my personal income tax. And now I may be in hot water with the IRS. Consider that my last donation. Sincerely, disgruntled, quote-unquote, previous donor. That last, quote-unquote, previous donor means that she's kind of considering donating again. We can get her back. <laughs> the door's kind of cracked. It, yeah, it's, it's not locked. From supplying strong documentation. <laughs> she's basically well, eavesdropping. Well, you could find $10 <laughs> per contribution, up to $5,000 per fundraising. So this is a big deal. If we do not disclose these documents, it's huge penalties. However, again, all we have to do is have a, a website that we could just have pointed to all of this information. Do I need to provide documentation for every single donation? Actually, there are some exceptions. Tokens are insubstantial goods or services that you provide to donors in exchange for contributions. These are so small, you don't have to document them separately. Whoa, 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 whoa. Could crypto be considered a token? Oh, man. Bash, don't go there. I'm so sorry. I am not going but down that yes, hole. yes, I believe also, so. Oh, God, this is <laughs> ugly. Dude, this is... Rights Whoa. Or privileges you know how like so many credit card places are like, hey, we do crypto. If the payment is $75 or it's, less. There's no, it's fucking a, a great, uh, it, it's a loophole. Finally, for transferring money. Religious benefits don't. Need we'll never do that. But uh, yeah, wow. Mm. Select <laughs> um, I'm gonna go what back over that real fast. Yeah, let's avoid that. I'm gonna play that over again real fast because well, I just got kind of. Well, you find ten dollars per contribution, up to five thousand dollars per fundraising event or mailing, if you fail to provide. It's that whole nominal shit again. At the time of solicitation <laughs> or upon monetary gains. Now let's talk about some exceptions. <laughs> All right. Do I need to provide documentation for every single donation? Actually, there are some exceptions. Tokens are insubstantial goods or services that you provide to donors in exchange for contributions. These are so small, you don't have to document them separately. Also, annually recurring rights or privileges provided as membership benefit don't need documentation if the payment is $75 or less. Finally, intangible religious benefits don't need to be documented either. Select each item to see Join some examples. Crawlers. It'll be your ticket to heaven. <laughs> hey, that's what... No, um, that's Catholic. They already did that. Oh, damn it. They beat us to it. Mm -hmm. We gotta come up with something better. Be like, ha, join Pub Crawlers. We'll send you to hell or heaven. You get to choose. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you the choice. <laughs> you get to go back and forth, but you only get, like, uh, one trip. So, like, you get to try both of them once. Better stop for a fifty dollar donation. Will take you. It's like trip. it's like you're in the Matrix and Morpheus is offering you the two pills. Goes, yeah. Which you, one do you want to pick? We were talking about this the other night. You take both. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. And then you just go through a, a wormhole. You're like purple, bitch. <laughs> then you end up in this other dimension. You just end up being Morpheus, and you're like, wait. <laughs> No, 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 no. You end up being Morpheus offering yourself the two pills. Ah. Oh, shit. I like that a lot. That's what the Matrix oh, 4 should have been. That's, that yes. moment God. right then, it should have been Neo becoming Morpheus and then like the whole like Matrix from Morpheus' perspective. That should have been Matrix 4. Oh, Yo. Too bad that the Morpheus character sick. in real life is a dick. Is he? Is he? Yeah, that, that, that's what I've heard. Uh, <laughs> fuck. I, thought, I like that cool guy. Person. Me too. Free? Anyways. Okay. Anyways, all right. So things we don't have to disclose: tokens. Donor gave at least five hundred fifty-five fifty, and the item bears. Okay, so this this is the kind of shit that hey, I love. I love look, this. We got hard numbers. I love this. It is so explicit. Yeah, it, gives you, it gives you a clean line. There's no question. Yeah. It can't be any more than eleven dollars and ten cents. Donor. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Fifty-five, fifty. I 
item. These but. amounts are from 2019. Guideline amounts are adjusted for inflation. Contact RS exempt annual organizations. Okay, cool. So it's probably around the same amount, but um, might be a little Hold bit on different. Sec. Item. Oh, these are for 2019, so we'll have to check the site or something. Yeah, so basically the the, the 5550 and the $11.10, that's the 2019 numbers. And we would just have to I'm check sure it again. Adjust it a little bit. I will I just um, probably go off of these because I'm assuming they're minimum, and then refer to it every year. So this I'll is we're giving out words right now. Uh, okay, so when it says a uh, item doesn't cost. That's interesting. Because, like, production cost or resale cost? I would assume production cost. I would imagine that within that $11.10 is to make it. Mm -hmm. To make it, ship it to you. Because there's things that are made for $10 that are sold for much more. Yes. Oh, God, yes. Admission... To 50 to 100 percent religious markup. ceremony, very small tangible benefits such as wine used in religious ceremony. Uh, religious benefits. Wait, so you can charge? For admission to religious ceremony and you don't have to disclose it does that mean we can go to like iraq and be like hey we want to be a part of your mosque here bro no Here's it means we wine. could make a church and just like charge people to show up to the church we could have our own dmt oh my church. god we have a fucking cover fee yeah, and then that doesn't Dude. have to be disclosed. It's an exception. What if you had like vendors and shit inside your church? You had like a ten dollar cover fee to get in, whoa, and they get like whoa. great deals on like food and drink and all that shit. You better slow down. Jesus came in and knocked over all those vendor tables. Whoa! Don't you remember the Bible? Whoa! <laughs> whoa! Jesus because was they were all making for too... the merchants. Come Kiss, on. It's because they were making too much money and he got jealous. Yeah, he wanted it. <laughs> he wanted in on it and he couldn't because he didn't suck. The Free stick. Oh, damn it. I must have uh, missed that line. <laughs> Didn't the priest come after Jesus? <laughs> he come after? Oh, wait. No. No. All right. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> asked me for a receipt for her expenses, and I didn't know I needed to create one. She said she spent $150 in travel expenses to speak at our gala. What should I do? Well, if a donor makes a single contribution of $250 or more in the form of unreimbursed expenses, such as those out-of-pocket transportation expenses, you're required to send the donor a written acknowledgement letter, and the donor should keep good records of the expenses. If the amount is below $250, you can still provide a receipt, but she doesn't need one to claim the deduction. What should the acknowledgement letter include? The acknowledgement letter should include a description of the services provided by the donor, a description and good faith estimate of the value of any goods or services that the organization provided in return for the contribution, and a statement that goods or services provided in return for the contribution consisted entirely of intangible religious benefits if that was the case. Next, let's talk about one other disclosure. Select the Continue button to learn more. So these they, these are exactly the same things as the written acknowledgement slide a couple slides ago. Okay. Like when it said the written acknowledgement for the non quid pro quo, it's the same thing. Yeah. Moving forward. I'm good to go. Kivy. Yeah. You got any questions? Uh, um, so basically, it really, there's a hard line between if it's a $250 or more donation, whether you're required to 
give them a written form of acknowledgement. Right. So That's what I got out of it. Basically, this this first sentence is the whole thing here. Unreimbursed yeah. out of pocket expenses are considered donations. So, like, let's say we have the pub crawlers meetup, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have someone that's, like, popular to our group show up and, like, either do something or, like, be a part of our, like, like pub crawl or, like, something, right? But they do okay. it because of, like, a business interaction. Like, for instance, let's say this is, this, this is not what we would do, but for some reason this makes sense to explain it this way. Let's say we uh, had a, 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 like, TikTok influencer come and, like, stream at our oh, fucking shit. thing, right? Well, yeah. they, they could say, well, hey, I paid for my travel here and my time here, and I donated, like, me doing 300 this. bucks. Well, no, 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 not, no, though they donated, like, the, the act of them coming and doing that and, like, uh, having expenses while they did that would be considered a donation. So we could then write an acknowledgement to them if they spend over $250 acknowledging that they did that for us and then they can on their taxes they, they write, write that, that off. off yes hmm. so this is about unreimbursed out-of-pocket expenses for people that are not part of our group okay does that include i mean i mean do, i think at that point they could say hey you know i flew to this location you know the the plane ticket was Three hundred dollars round trip, right? Right. Yeah. I went to this hotel. You know, it's eighty bucks a night mm-hmm. for three days. Mm-hmm. What about like per diem for food and drink? What about is, is should that be included, or it's more so like yeah. there there would be no per diem like, because like, can, we're not paying they, them. Well, but the thing is, is can't they say hey, but. I paid this much a night. Right, right, right. So, 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 yeah. so, so, terminology wise, there would be no per diem. There's no allowed allocated amount for them to spend for something. What okay. they spend in regards to doing just for us something, like if they came and then they ended up going off and partying for a week, that would fuck mm-hmm. up their their uh, deduction. But if they came yeah, specifically yeah. just for this thing, did this for us, and then like left, they and then like wrote all of that cost off as something that as, they donated right, right. to us. Mm-hmm. How they break it down on their end is their responsibility to be accurate because we oh, won't absolutely. be able to sit there and say your ticket costs this much, your food costs this much. And th- you know what I mean? Like we can't determine mm-hmm. that for them, but they can show the receipts. So that's how they would hold it up on their end. So they would tell the amount to us. We would write a uh, acknowledgement to them. And then it, let's say they get audited because the IRS thinks that they claim too much. Well, then they could pull the receipts from that actual interaction where they from, show right, the, the, from, the plane fee, uh, they yep. show the, the 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 hotel fee. Yes, yes. And then like the IRS would then determine off of that. Mm, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Does that make pretty sense? straightforward? Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Um, yeah. 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 Any questions? Don't feel it's cool. Hesitant. You, yeah, you, you can host in a celebrity. You know. Yeah. that I'd be aware of. There's just one more. If your Wing organization eating offers to sell hmm? goods or services that are Will Smith. available free from the federal government, you must Bring disclose Will Smith. that I can eat more fact in a than well, see, they, they, there, There's some questions right there. Right there. Like right there. Wing eating contest. So do we solicit to uh, a, a wing uh, producer company or like some kind of wing shop and say, hey, do you want to donate all these wings to us? We're going to do a wing eating contest you can put your name on it then we would give a written letter to them on whatever the cost of those wings that they donated to us are so that they could then write those off nice dude old bay wings never tried them. old bay or habanero mango habanero spice oh yeah something about me some mango habanero something about me and wings don't work man every time i try and eat wings i get killed Oh, I get killed. So, 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 oh, so I, I, I got such a sensitive little fucking stomach, man. If I could eat something, like if I could have it part of every dish, it'd be a couple wings. Damn. Ooh. I just I love chicken wings, man. I love all the flavors you could do with them. Like I eat the cartilage. I eat everything. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, the same I way. Sh- I, I stripped that shit. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> like you barely see little pieces of meat hanging on mine. Nope. Oh, I love it. No waste it's here. Just something about yeah, just something about like you know just digging into. I it feel like I, I feel like I'm like uh like born in Olive Garden or some shit. I'm thinking back in my head, what do I want with every meal? I'm like, oh, I want like bread and butter and salad. <laughs> Dude, bread, butter, and salad's <laughs> fucking delicious. For like every meal, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, fresh warm bread. Yeah, like some, like, like, oh, like yeah. some olive oil or something. You ever do the olive oil in oh. the uh, uh, balsamic vinaigrette? You like put them together. I haven't. No. So you get like a real, real good quality bread, or you bake your own, mm -hmm. um, and you like you warm it up a little bit if you uh, got it from the store, and just tear off like a little piece, and the 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 olive oil and the uh, balsamic vinaigrette do not mix, but like you mm -hmm. can kind of so mix they it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they separate together on the like you put it on like a little dish or like a, a low a low plate of something, and uh, mm -hmm. you just kind of like put a little bit on the bread and try that. Oh. But you got to get oh, good man. quality balsamic vinaigrette. You can't get, like, cheap shit. It tastes... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyways, we're almost yeah. done with this. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other disclosure rules. Any goods or services offer that are... Must be available... Wait. Any goods or services offer that are available free from the government. <laughs> Offered that are available free. Wait. No. English. I think they're saying... Uh, offer of services and so it kind of works but not really like services oh offer, yeah you know <laughs> it's not saying any goods or services offer it's any goods or services offer <laughs> <laughs> it's basically any goods or services offered that are available free from the federal government is a, is a no must be disclosed in a conspicuous oh. okay conspicuous. Conspicuous. thank you i was like that's not how i say that <laughs> okay, and a very okay. I see what it means. I I missed a whole you. Conspicuous. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and easily be right. Okay. Um. So available what am free. I going, so what other disclosures Here, should I be this. aware of? There's just one more. If your organization offers to sell goods or services that are available free from the federal government, you must disclose that fact <laughs> in a conspicuous and easily recognizable You format. know what this is for? Now, let's this is for TurboTax. Consequence of noncompliance. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to figure out. I was like, what? what is this covering? Like, if we got, yeah. like... Food stamps or something, and we decide to start selling. No, that's illegal. <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah, that that that's exactly what mm -hmm. he said it would cover. Because the ta obviously you can get your taxes done for free via the federal gov government, or you can that, pay for turbo tax. No, it's not can a bad you, thing at all. This that's good. Can you do that for your family and loved ones? What? No, probably not. What do you What do you mean by that? No, can you like like, let's say like oh you know, bash kiss a pie and myself. We're in, we have our little five hundred one c three. Can we like our girlfriends like say hey, donate to this or whatever? We'll write off the the cost for doing your taxes through TurboTax or something. You lost me. It, uh, I'm sorry. As a service, can we do your do taxes for taxes? You? If you donate, I don't know, whatever turbo tax costs, I, and then write and then write it off. I don't know what you're asking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kids of Pie, do you understand what I'm saying or no? A little bit. I'm I'm a like, little bit lost in the like, weeds on it though. It's a service that we provide to to donors. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if is, we want hey, to set we, ourselves we can up get you twenty percent off on TurboTax. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what? I thought you there was more framework. to the question. Then we would have to disclose that, and <laughs> you could disclose that. You could write that off. Easily recognizable. Way, well, disclosed to uh, the donor. My question will probably be answered later. Just so, say it, say like think on it real fast, and just say it again, real like just just a little simpler. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so again, there's a there's a service that the pub callers 
provides for people. Okay. Like, hey, you donate 50 bucks and you get a mug and you get a tur- uh, a version of TurboTax Basic for free. Right? Okay, but TurboTax Basic for free, there's a government-provided service that is that that exists. So it would it it's it would be free. What? I don't think this is going over any sort of the, the um uh, wait. Uh guys, I'm gonna let go of my thought. I had a thought and I just can't word it correctly. That's fine. Um where it makes sense. Pretty much so uh the thing here is the the other disclosure rule. This is brand new actually. This was just a few years ago that they added this. What this is saying is if you provide a thing or if you do a thing that cost but the government does that same thing for free you have to disclose very clearly that the government does that for free and they don't have to pay for your service that's what this rule right here is saying I also wonder how TurboTax it's and all that get around free, that because they make it who, really though? hard. So they have a huge, uh, in, Intuit has a huge lobby, huge lobby in Congress. <laughs> yeah, that's how they get around they it. Get they, they, it. They throw a Because they don't make it conspicuous or easily No, they throw a fuck ton of money at our congressmen <laughs> and women and they take it and they fuck us. That's that's all it is. It's that simple. Um they, they, they make so much money that they can throw money at people that are supposed to represent us, and they don't represent us. They represent other interests, and yeah. we get fucked. That's all it is. Simple. So, Kevy, you asked available to free for who? I I guess the, the federal tax thing's mostly just uh, free for anyone that makes under, like, what, 75000 or something like that? Depending on the service as well. Yeah. But hmm. I guess if the federal government offers it to, for free to anybody, I guess we would have to disclose it. Well, conspicuously. Government doesn't do what we do, so it don't really matter. Yeah. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about this too much. Right. Okay. Continue. Okay. What are the penalties? <laughs> why <not> comply? <laughs> there are fucking penalties. What are you talking about? Why comply? $1,000 for each day the failure occurred or 50% of the total cost of all solicitations made by the organization on the same day it failed to meet the requirement. So let's go over what you've learned so far. Select the recap button to move forward. Oh, you filled out that information wrong. We're taking half of your donations of of these days. Yeah, that's rough. But you haven't lost your exempt status. You know what really sucks about this? What? (sighs) That just means that that's how much it costs not to comply. Which means... If you're making enough money, fuck. You can just pay the IRS to not comply. All it costs is a thousand dollars a day. First, I'm I sure they'll get the quid they'll get tired of that quick and probably yeah. look into it more. I mean, yeah, but like At the same time. because well, like okay, the earlier spoon feeding them. Earlier, I don't know if you were here, Kiss, but the conversation got brought up about the Trump school and like some of the shit that uh, Trump's kids were doing and why they can't. Um, be involved in Dude, charities anymore <laughs> you could even take the scotland yard when trump was building the fucking mega golf resort mm-hmm. over in scotland and mm-hmm. then just completely stops construction so like that makes <laughs> so when i see this like thousand dollar a day compliance now i see why those things lasted for as long as they did do you know what i mean well yeah it's like they say oh instead of us complying we can pay it's $1, just a cost for a year yeah it's just a cost you know like fuck man you just Whoa. you just Which st- you put it in in the budget Yep. Jeez. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go over this yeah. recap real quick. If donors get something in return for their donations, 
you must disclose both the amounts of the donations and the fair market value of the goods or services given. So I think we're almost done. Even so, yep. that's what I was just checking. Substantial goods. We just have some knowledge checks and then conclusion. Damn, I missed a good bit. It's uh, a very short. Like, also, it, it was actually very quick. very short today. It's only about an hour. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be like last week. <laughs> last week's was intense. Yeah. For I blame myself a little bit for that. I was throwing Let's so much like what ifs out there. The oh, it was good. I think that that was actually really I, important. I just, because I, just I try to put myself on the other end yes. where I'm I'm not on the what's it called the board of directors you know i'm like a new person coming in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how i'm gonna view this right yes absolutely you know? and I, I think that's very important i don't want important. this to be a job i don't want this to be a job man mm -hmm. you know no, this is uh, this is my enjoyment place so i think the the, the, my the big place. question when it comes down to like <laughs> kevin and i were speaking about it earlier uh wanting uh, uh everything to just be volunteer and have no issue about uh um employment and all that jazz yeah the way yeah, yeah. If you're getting paid One, or getting a percentage or whatever you know so um yeah and then there's like how do you how do you make it operate but then not be a job and it, what it comes down to is you're going to have one to three people that are going to be doing some job shit yep, and those yep. people we need to have a discussion on is it worth their time to make them an independent contractor and pay them a percentage of our donations and that's that's the only thing that I think is going to be a big discussion in our group. Because I personally would much rather everyone be volunteers. So much easier. However, and just have yeah. it all go to like the central pub yeah, college. Where this, yeah. this, cup, this pays for these like, yeah. specific things. But that's that's what I was thinking. But I would prefer uh, and I'll, and I'll way, use that as an example. But it doesn't I... pay for tickets to go to concerts. For, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, that's a decision we're going to have to make as a group because that is a big decision. You know, that's a very important thing. And that will steer who wants to do those jobs, because yeah. some people will be willing to do that work without getting paid for the benefit of the group. Some people will not. And but that's to be okay. fair, I can't de just demand someone to work for free. Right. If um, I would do it. Uh, one people of the things. Why is it time? I don't think I have it pulled up anymore, unfortunately. Um, maybe it's on one of these other ones. The yeah. only thing is, is like, time is money. Time is very important for some, for, well, right. actually for all of us, you know, and, and how you spend your time. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. if we're going to have, uh, whatever state we choose, is really important too. Because like, for instance, if that we one, choose yeah. uh, one state that has a required director um position right versus another state and it has a uh, required three director positions things like that so like there's a lot that needs to be discussed on that there is but again state and needs trying to, be to automate a lot of this yes will, yes will every, make it a lot easier that burden my my ideal would be like every single percentage of a dollar that comes in is already determined on where it's going and how it's going to be allocated the moment yeah. it, it comes in no one makes a decision on it. No one has to do anything on it. It just, it comes in and all that shit flows through how it's supposed to. Exactly. No arguments. Easy. Right, right. We make all the decisions up front. Um, I'm going to make a little screen cap of this recap because I actually have noticed that I really like having an image of these recaps in the notes. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a screen cap myself. It is handy. All right. Cool if I go on? Yep, yep. Good on my end. All right. What is the best answer? Select submit. Blah, 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 blah. What is a quid pro quo donation? A donation of Italian food. Yes. <laughs> He's got the quid pro, yeah. Donors receive something in return for their donation. I believe it's D. Yeah. Which that, that, you know, that something in return could be Italian food. Oh, something for some oh. If you come work for us, you're gonna get the best fucking Italian food you've ever had in your life. <laughs> I swear Go we're not Frank. to mafia. <laughs> we cool answering this one? I'd say yep. D. Yay! Good job. Good job, Kevin. Select the correct answer. Right. Click the <laughs> <button. Here's laughs> Which the detail card. does not need to be included in a written acknowledgement? Statement that no goods or services were provided by the organization and returned for the contribution if that was the case. Date of the contribution. The period of time the donation was good for. What? 
yeah. description, but not value <laughs> of non-cash contribution. The period of time the donation was good for. Um, I, yeah, definitely think it's C. <laughs> that one oh, wait, makes, what's a statement that sense. no goods or services provided by the organization return? Like you know what C is? Yeah, a is oh. just void. A is just void. What, what the fuck does that even have? No, no, no. A, a, a is very, very, very much uh, part of the written contribution. Yeah. If, if if we do give something, we do have to mention that. Right. So like, if if they just gave us a donation and we gave them nothing in return, in return, oh, we, we just have to say oh. that. But. If yeah, we yeah. did give them something um, in return that's not uh, cash, there needs to be a yeah. description of what it is. So, like, I'm gonna value. remember when we were looking at the cash contribution and the donation, and it said, like, yeah. sheet music was one of the donations? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was their donation. The yeah, right. It, it, but the sheet music, but you do have to state what it's worth, right? No. Because how are you going to determine that? I don't know. No, so you can contribute non-cash contribute it. like it's still yes. a donation. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. So like the person could then take that on their like they could take their our written document that says you gave us this thing, say that say it's sheet of music. Mm -hmm. And then on their taxes, they're going to say I think it's worth this much. Oh, I see. I see. So that that's that's at the disclosure of the donor. Yes, because that would be Basically. something that either they're probably making or something that they possess that they either mm -hmm. already know the value of or can determine it. And that's well, between yeah, them that's and the cool. IRS. That's not for us. That that's not for us because we already received our donation. And we're not giving the... them money based off of that value. Like for instance, right, like right. if they gave us the sheet music and we paid them five dollars, that's different. But if they just yeah, yeah. gave us the sheet music, we can't determine how much that thing's worth. That's that's on their end. Yeah, so it's really with the cash donations is where you have to provide the time, what, how much cash, and yeah. Okay. Exactly. But I still think it's C. Yeah. Yep. C. Same here. Yep. Donations are Yay. not good for a specific period of time, so this does not need to be included in the written acknowledgement. Yay! Great Progress job. check! Now to explain the fair market value of the goods and services you provided for contributions and ensure that donors get accurate written acknowledgments of their donations. I mentioned several resources during this required disclosures course, so feel free to go back to review them or you can use this list of links. Click on the continue button to complete this course. Yo, why don't we just become like a news outlet? Whoa, yo, how about this, how about this, how about this? Let's become a church of news. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. We are the news of church. Mm -hmm. I like it. We could tell you what's happening above and below. Of everyone in the IRS <laughs> division, thank you for taking this Call course. it something, something stupid like leave, intergalactic of, official oh, shit. fucking information you provide. Discourse. Intergalactic sure Federation. <laughs> intergalactic Federation of Discourse. <laughs> Ooh. I like that. To send us an email. After you've sent your feedback, you can print out a certificate of completion as recognition. I really think we should just call it Church of Sayings, course. but I mean we will. We already do. <laughs> There'll just be size that just say <gasps> praise oh my God, the same. This one works. Is it actually what? straight Bro. up? Actually? Wow. Oh my Bro. God. Wait, wait. Hold on a second, Bash. Have you been putting pub crawlers as two words or one word? Two two words? Have you been doing it the whole time? Well, it is two words. Oh, okay. Have you known it? I mean, so like, that just... Like, it looks nice together. It does, like, it, it, it does. It, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's got to be like that? Oh, ew. Month date. Just fix it for me. Yeah, Google would fix it for you. There we go. But yeah, I've always wow, done it as I a, a space. Because like oh, that, okay, okay. Like, 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 that looks like a username to me. You know? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And like, so that looks more official to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I I agree. Two capital letters, space in between. Oh, that's funny. This is from 2017. This is an older one. That's why it works. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. Do you think they? Do you think they fixed the other ones too? No, no. They were they they looked <laughs> different when you pulled them up.
All right. Well, cool. All right. So that was section four of the IRS charity workshop, and we are complete on our end. Good job, everyone. Yay. Print. Oops. Um, well, now I have two of them. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> any any statements, ideas, questions about all this? Because this was this was a very easy one today. Yeah, this was pretty straightforward. I yeah, I copied down the notes that me like I feel were very important. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, I got the notes that I that I could. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna sign us off then for the video and the stream then, and then we can chat it up afterwards. But. Thank you, anybody, for joining us or checking this out later in our group or not. doesn't matter. It's nice to have people along and learning together. So cheers. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Hey, uh... you'll, you'll see me crawling into pub sometime. Hey. <laughs>